Hello, my name is Captain Mike Fitzgerald. I'm one of the pilots on board the Belle Louisville. And I'd like to show you a few of the things here in the pilot house that are not only of great interest, but also original equipment, as well as some things that we've added over the years. The boat was originally built in 1914. It was equipped with a power steering system. This power steering system was actually invented in the 1890s. So it was relatively new in 1914, and it's the same one we still use today, and it works exactly the same way. It's a steam power assist system. So we don't actually steer the boat by pulling the wheel around, which can be done. As you can understand, it would be very labor intensive, and it usually took two people. It took a pilot, and the other side of the wheel would be a cub pilot who would help them steer the boat. Eventually, the cub pilot would learn the river and become a pilot themselves. Once this was invented, it was a game changer. Only one person was needed in the pilot house. Simply, if I were to move it to the left, the wheel turns to the left, I bring it back up to center, the wheel will stop. Same thing if I go to the right. Wheel go to the right, I bring it back up to center. Now when we back the boat up, if the rudders are off center a, a bit, they'll want to go all the way over, which means this wheel will turn revolution after revolution. To keep that from happening, there's a brake on the floor here, and you can stand on the brake, and it locks the wheel into place. This is all original equipment, and the brake system and the wheel system is actually technology out of the 1850s, or maybe even earlier than that. But I've seen lithographs of the 1850s, and when you look at that, you see the pilot wheel, and you see the brake on the floor. This is our indicator from the pilot house to the engine room, also a telegraph. Depends on how it telegraphs what we would like to do or it indicates what we would like to do. The reason why I say it's what we would like to do because we can move this. I can move it all day long, even when we're underway and nothing will happen. Down in the engine room, there's another large dial and the engineer will, will hear us move this and will telegraph our intention. So all the speed is controlled by the engine room as well as the transmission, so to speak. We just do the steering up here. This beautiful telegraph or indicator was actually put on the boat in the 1950s. Prior to that, the boat used, utilized the old Western River Bell system to telegraph or indicate to the engineer what the pilot would like. And what that is, is these two handles are interconnected and they go to a bell in the engine room about this big around, about this tall. This smaller one here goes to yet another bell, this smaller bell. And this goes to yet another bell. So you have three different bells three different sizes with three different tones. Depending on whether the pilot wanted to stop the boat, back the boat, or come ahead slow, half, or full, he would indicate that to the engineer by telegraphing that sound down to the engine room. So if he rang this, say, three times and followed by this, or rang this several times, depending on which ones rung first and which ones followed, the engineer would know whether the pilot wanted to stop the boat, back the boat, come ahead, slow, half or full. This is a remote control for the port searchlight, which is out on the left hand side of the boat, all the way out. These searchlights are of 1930s vintage or possibly older. This is the starboard searchlight or searchlight on the right hand side of the boat. It's out front. Just like to show you how it works. It's a remote control. So I can turn it on here and then I bring it around. It's very bright. Two carbon arcs. Two arc carbon arcs coming together producing this bright light. I bring it back around.
We're not sure when this 1930s vintage searchlight was put on board the boat. However, it's been here as long as the Belle Louisville has. So it's been on during the Idlewilder Avalon years. And uh, it's, we use it from time to time when necessary at night, naturally, if we had to make a landing uh, away from the dock here or if we're in areas where we're not familiar, we can use it to search uh, the banks or search the river or possibly to spot a snag or drift if we're in a situation where that's prevalent. One of the other original pieces of equipment that we have on board the boat is the original roof bell. All, all boats, all vessels have bells around for various reasons at different times. For example, before we depart the landing, when the mate's ready downstairs, the mate will ring the bell three times. That lets everyone know, all the crew, that in approximately five minutes, the boat will be backing out. Also, it's used in case there's an emergency. If any ringing of the bell ever occurs, a roof bell, the crew knows to listen and to go to the bow or listen for further instruction. This bell it can be rung from either up here in the pilot house or also down on the bow. And it's not just a simple pull, you have to sort of get it rocking a little bit and then you can ring it. As an example, So I just sent the signal out that the boat will be ready to depart in approximately five minutes. However, that signal usually comes from the bow. The mate will let, will ring it when the mate is ready for departure. Another original feature to the Belle of Louisville is the first whistle. It's the original whistle. It was put on the boat in 1914. Every time we leave the dock, every time we're underway, any type of whistle signal that is needed, we still use it today. There's a foot pedal on the floor over here. When I push down on it, it'll open the valve all the way downstairs, just above the boilers. Whatever pressure we have on the boilers, up to 200 pounds, usually around 190, will come up through the line and energize the whistle. It's very loud and it's very distinct. Each boat had its own whistle and its own sound over the years. We even have what's known as a landing whistle, depending on, depending on how we use it. Our landing whistle is, is one long, two shorts, a long, and a short. And that signifies that the Belle Louisville is coming into a landing. Years ago, when it was the Idle Wild or the Avalon, it let people know before there was communication like we have today, which boat was coming in to the landing, and then if, especially if there were merchants or in, in our case, passengers wanting to board, they would know that that boat is in dock and that they could come down to the boat for whatever their needs were. As years have gone by, naturally we've had to modernize the boats for uh, various reasons. Uh, communication is very, very important. And fortunately we have uh, uh, really good uh, electronics available to us that we can use. This is an intercom system, part of our modern communications here on board the boat. We have different stations. Right now it's set for the, the bridge, and the bridge, landing bridge, is where the captain will stand. The captain will stand out there and can clearly see the uh, deck crew and how they're working. The mate's down there providing supervision. Also, the captain will give directions to the pilot, let them know uh, how far off we are, give them distances, and the pilot can react accordingly in handling the boat. If necessary, the captain will give more direction to the pilot as the captain sees fit. We also can talk to the engine room, the bow, 
uh, various other locations on the boat, including the purser who uh, oversees the financial uh, side of the boat and usually works in the uh, food and beverage areas while underway. Another part of our electronic equipment that was added over the years is we have radios. We stand by on channel 13, which is a commer commercial station, and, um, and 16, channel 16 is standard and required by the United States Coast Guard for everyone to stand by on. In addition to that, we added an AIS system, which uh, tells us where other boats are, how fast they're moving, tells us how fast we're moving, and approximately what time we will uh, meet those boats so we can make passing signals uh, and arrangements as needed. If we're going to pass them on the right hand or starboard side, we would blow two whistles. If we're going to pass them on the port side or left hand side of the boat, it would be one whistle. In addition to that, we also have radar. We can adjust the range to where we can expand out or bring it in closer on both the radar and the AIS system, which is a global GPS system, same as you would have in your car, but it's made specifically for boats. Thank you for your interest in the Bell Level and thank you for your interest in the pilot house and how we do things here. Uh, and please check out some of our other videos uh, throughout the boat and I'll show you how we do different things. And if you have an interest, please feel free to contact us and ask any questions you may have. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you again and have a good day.